ECOWAS court delivers final judgment on Nnamdi Kano's petition against Nigerian government. The ECOWAS court of justice has dismissed a suit filed by Nnamdi Kano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, against the Nigerian government, alleging that he was tortured, assaulted, and subjected to inhuman treatment by security operatives when he was arrested in 2015. A report monitored on Vanguard newspaper by Niger News says the ECOWAS court in a judgment read by Justice Dukwe Atoki heard that the IPOB leader failed to prove his allegations against the Nigerian government. The ECOWAS court stressed that it had no reason to conclude that his arrest and detention were unlawful and arbitrary as claimed. Niger News learned that the three-member panel of the court sitting in Abuja, Nigeria's capital, on Wednesday, December 11th, also dismissed Kano's request for monetary compensation. Though the court acknowledged that Kano had the legal capacity to approach is to seek redress for any violation of his human rights. It however heard that without a mandate, he lacks the legal personality to represent the IPO before the court. The ECOWAS court thereafter struck out names of the second and third defendant, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice and the Director General of the Department of State Service, DSS, from the suit on the premise that they were not signatories to the ECOWAS revised treaty, thus leaving only the Federal Republic of Nigeria as the sole defendant in the suit. Niger News understands that the IPOB leader had in the suit marks ECW slash CCJ slash APP slash OC slash 16, which he filed before the court on March 3rd, 2016, through his lawyer, Mr. Ifani Ejo4, claimed that his right to life, personal integrity, privacy, fair trial, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, personal liberty, freedom of association, private property, right to existence, and right to self determination were violated following his arrest and detention by Nigerian security agents. Kano also alleged that he was a victim of arbitrary arrest, detention, torture, inhuman, and degrading treatments while in detention, insisting that the federal government confiscated his personal belongings through its agents. The IPOB leader demanded monetary compensation in the sum of $800, $800 million US, $800 million. However, Abdullahi Abubakar, a lawyer to, uh, that, represented, that represented the Nigerian government, prayed that the court dismiss the suit, which he contended lack, lacked merit. Federal government argued that the country was obliged to enforce the rule of law as stipulated in its constitution, treaties and protocol that included defending the sovereignty of an in, undivided Nigeria. Abubakar added that activities of IPOB were secessionist in nature as it instigated a separationist agenda among the people of the country, southeast and south south regions, using its Biafra radio. The lawyer to the Nigerian government further have heard that acts of the plaintiff were intended to garner support for a war against the defendants and carve out a geopolitical area to be declared the Republic of Biafra. Consequently, Abubakar stated that the defendants initiated an investigation into the allegations against the plaintiff that led to his arrest and discovery of illegal firearms and radio transmitters in his possession. Items said post security risk to the country. Niger News understands that the defendants also have submitted that the plaintiff was investigated while in detention for offenses of criminal conspiracy, managing and belonging to an illegal society, saying though he was granted bail, he was detained again on fresh charges that bordered on treasonable felony. The defendant told the ECOWAS court that although the plaintiff and some members of the IPOP had severely threatened the peace of the nation with their demands, it gave no orders to its agencies to kill members of IPOP, nor did any such killings occur. This online news platform understands that the Nigerian government stressed that it remained committed to upholding the rule of law while recognizing and protecting the fundamental rights of its citizens and all groups, including the IPOG. Meanwhile, Justice Edward Amoaku, Asante, and Keitura, Kekura 
Bangura were other members of the ECOWAS court panel that upheld federal government's position and dismissed Kano suit. So guys, that is the latest. Ah, there's a saying that it is not over until it is over. You know, at times I just laugh when the federal government is always coming on the angle that, oh, uh, they are committed to uphold the rule of law to do this and that. Of course, it's playing out. We don't even need to, uh, we don't need a soothsayer. We don't even need to go far to start looking for all of this. But all I know is that justice must prevail at the end of the day because what we are experiencing as a people in this country is not something anybody can be laughing about or, you know, we'll be happy about or be, you know, it's not really funny. It's not really funny. It's biting everybody now. Whether you are Biafra, whether you belo belong to a Biafra group or you belong to the so-called Nigeria group, nobody is laughing, nobody is smiling with what is happening now. The government might feel or think that they are really they are really having upper hand. And just like they said, Nam DC has a right to uh to go for redress or to you know to go further than this. That is just my own opinion. But what I know is that at the end of the day, justice must prevail. Uh, someone says here that, hmm, uh, please, Nigerian government should be careful. But Nigerian government is really finding that man's trouble. Someone says, you now see the reason why uh, his lawyer's house was burned and declared him wanted by police. And a lot of people are advising Kano here that Namde Kano is a warrior without weapon. He should go to ICPC, to the Hague. That's my uh, zoo advice. And someone say, someone say we don't need Ecowas to get our freedom. All I know is one day, all we wake up from sleep and see Biafra flag. And someone says I don't believe in this judgment. This is conspiracy. Nigeria is good in bribery and corruption. Have they killed the case with bribe, bribery? Who made up the panel judges, friends of Nigeria government, while the military were humiliating Kanu and other? No one was allowed even to take a video. You know how the Nigeria army behaves. Everyone knows that Nigeria is a mess up state. Hmm. And one of the reasons why his lawyer's life was threatened to pave way for them to deliver unlawful judgments, which... Lawyer represented him the day judgment was delivered. That's a very, very, very big question. That is a very, very valid question. And someone is saying that, ah, Namde Kano is broke. That's why he was demanding for that kind of amount of money. Very, very, unf very, very funny. So just like I said, it is not over until it's over. So they will continue to press forward because what we have and what we are seeing right now is not, he's not funny at all. Shiore's case is a very, very big example that anybody can really relate with, with the way things are going in this country. We have a Fulani SME that are, you know, is a free fall for them. They can do and undo. And just, I heard a, from uh, one of the states that uh, a farmer killed a Fulani SME. This is a reprisal. This thing. And before you know, he was arrested. The farmer was really arrested. And You've never heard that all these SME have been arrested or they've been charged to court. No. They are just covering themselves, covering them up. People who will boldly come out and be telling you that you have to give them your land. They have to do If not, there will be no peace. What could be more inciting than that kind of a thing? And the DSS will not say anything. They won't do anything. They won't do anything. And I don't know, like I always ask, when has it become a, 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 a crime? To say, oh, I want to go my separate way. And the government is talking about oh, the rule of law. Oh, uh, they have sworn to that oath that the Nigeria will not disintegrate. But they have sworn, they, they've never, they've sworn oath again that Nigeria, people in uh, uh, of the country must continue to suffer. Is that what they have sworn to? Is that what they are upholding? Suffering here and there, everywhere it's in the Sari, is that what they have sworn to that they want to uphold? Is really really pathetic. So, guys, I would like to hear from you what you think about this latest uh, development. Do you think Namdi Kano should go further, or he, of course, uh, in my opinion, is not gonna, is not gonna, it has not really come to an end. So, guys, I leave your comments below and let's hear your take. Thank you very much. Bye.